What it be, y'all? Resident 47 here again. I got another album review to drop on y'all tonight. This is going to be on Helium's Rarities compilation and final release, Ends With End, released on May 19th, 2017. I've already talked about how Helium got their started up on my Dura Vlog and Pirate Prude reviews, so go watch those if you want to hear the story. But um, Helium disbanded around 1998, 1999 because their music wasn't paying the bills, and Mary Timney started up her own solo career and released a few albums like Mountains in 2001, the Golden Dub in 2002, and XX in 2005. And then she also had a few other bands after that, like her self-titled group, the Mary Timoney Band in 2007, Wild Flag in 2011, and most recently, X Hex from 2013 to now. So around 2016, 2017, she actually wanted to reunite Helium, but it unfortunately fell through because Ashboy and Sean Devlin were busy with their personal lives. So instead, she went on her own tour called Mary Timoney Plays Helium, and at that same time, Matador Records re-released The Dirt of Luck and The Magic City on vinyl. And to close the chapter on Helium, they put out this commemorative album called Ends With End. So, this only came out digitally and on vinyl. I don't have the vinyl sold out on Matador's website. Maybe I can get it one day. But for now, I had to make a custom CD for myself because I'm a CD person first. So here's the cover. It's like a lot of confetti with different pics of the band throughout the years. Like this one's from the Dirt of Luck sessions. There's OG bassist Brian Dutton. Press photo from the Dirt of Luck. This is a picture that Timmy uses for his social platforms. And then this is actually the original logo they had during Pirate Prude. Track list right here. Disc and spine art I did myself. And this is a press photo they did for the Magic City. 19 tracks are on this album. I'm going to skip over the first four, which are Baby Vampire Made Me, Triple X, Triple Zero, and Love Money. These are all from the Pirate Prude EP, and I already reviewed that record, so if you want to hear my thoughts on those songs, go watch that. So we're going to skip to track five, which is Lucy. Right at the start, we have a mind-melting banger right here. This was the B-side to their 7-inch single, Hole in the Ground, from 1993. This is in my top five Helium songs. I can't get an enough of this one. The band goes the fuck in. They're at 110% here. Mary Timoney's vocal performance is in a complete different dimension on this track. She just grabbed something like deep down inside her and just put out her best performance on this track. It's like a simple chorus, but it's very catchy. And Sean kills it on the drums too, and as well as Mary on the guitar. Just love the way this track moves. It's goes in between like different sequences seamlessly and going back to Timmy for a moment I like this wordplay she puts down Lucy said boredom is the biggest word she's ever heard Lucy said I don't get it and I said word simple but effective wordplay I love the track and the track ends like a really epic way just keeps building and building to this really climactic finish and towards the end of that part Timmy starts changing her delivery at around 539 hitting these really high notes it's fucking crazy. She's one of my favorite singers of all time at this point. And I think this track should have been on Pirate Prude or had a video or something. Something should have been given to this track. But it has its own homer in this uh, Ends With End album. So we're going to move on to track 6 now, which is Turn My Tree. This is the uh, B-side to their debut single, The American Gene, from 1992. And I wish that song was on this album because it's not... But this is some uh, summer theme music, and that's made clear with the opening line. You like summer because it's hot. It's so hot that I can't breathe. This is another track where Timmy's vocals are, are just completely fucking unbelievable. This is a really beautiful track right here. I feel like if it was backed by like a big distributed label, it could have been somewhat of a deal in 1992. The chorus by itself is very easy to get stuck in somebody's head. Very, very, very catchy. And I love this song. Just, no, just another track where Mary Timmy is at her best as a vocalist. So next up is track 7, A Hole in the Ground. This is the 7 inch they put on in 1993. And it's also the song they used to promote this Ends With An album. And another dope track, just like Lucy, the way the track moves is really fucking smooth. Mary and Sean's chemistry is tight as fuck. And the beats that are like at 109... And 257, I really like those. 
the, the drums and the way the guitar goes with them, really good. And then the, again, the chorus, like I said about Lucy, is a simple vocal melody, but very effective and very catchy. So, we want to, uh, oh God, this next track, track eight, Magic Box. It's also called In a Little Box. This was made for the half-cocked movie soundtrack in 1994 and appears in the end credits. This shit goes in. It's more laid back, but still heavy at points. And Timmy just fucking burns it on this track. Her singing and the vocal melodies she puts into here are unfucking believable. Like that um that line that just passed. I swear I've got these magic things that's not on my head. They're under my bed. Got some trees, a river, and an old man's head under my bed. Great poetry and great delivery too. And then the chorus is another amazing one. Very hypnotic with a way it. It's just laid back, but still heavy. And the way Timmy just delivers her vocals over that. But it, it'll just make you get lost in the music itself. And then, even more so, like, when it comes back around at 2.51, she has, like, this sort of whistling layer over the background. And it's very, like, entrancing. And then, it just, out of nowhere, it gets heavy as fuck again with that breakdown of 307. And the way Timmy changes her delivery like it ain't shit is fucking... I love it. I really fucking love this song. And, um... This is like, uh... Should have been on, like, the ending track on Pyre Prude, I think. Would have been perfect. Would have... Yeah, would have been perfect for Pyre Prude, I'll say. But, um... It finds its place pretty well on here. So... We're gonna move on to... We want to track 9 now, which is the Super Ball demo. This one was the original version of the song that became classic on the Dirt of Luck album. There's some differences between this and that version. Like on the riff and the verses, it doesn't really have like that bowed string effect. It has more of like a synth effect. Like um, which is ironic because in the chorus it has like a synth effect. And in the chorus of this version it sounds really more like a fuzz pedal is being used. And actually, Timmy's vocals are doubled up on this version. And like towards the second verse, there's this music box that plays for a little bit, which is obviously not in the album version. And there's a line on this track that's like, um, everything I say ends with N. That's where this album got its title from. So, you know that right there. I did, um, I prefer the, uh, Dirt of Love version a lot more than this, but this is still a great version to listen to and hear how it evolved as a song. So, that's the Super Bowl demo. And the next four tracks are all from the Super Bowl Plus EP, which was from 1995. And it starts on track 10 with What institution are you from? My fucking god. This is another one of my favorite songs of all time. The, the fucking chorus just... The song starts off with this just very catchy and very like laid back too. And then Timony just... Adding these alibs over the chorus is just slick as fuck. Her personality in this track is very engaging. Then her presence in the verses is just as effective. The falsetto she brings out, she's known for her best, fucking rules this track. And like I'll say, I'll say this right here: Mary Timoney's sense of melody is unparalleled by most. Sean goes hard with the drumming on here, but it's kind of buried in the mix. Still hitting those snares like it's. Oh, it's a money. And Ash Boy gets really funky on the bass at the end, too. But Mary's performance on this track, god damn. This song feels like something that could have been played on, like, the local alternative station, which is called 96.5 The Buzz, and its code is uh, KRBZ. They had this um, segment, like, Monday through Friday, it's called The 90s at Noon, and for a full hour, they played nothing but 90s alternative indie music. This would have slipped right in with like everything else that they were rotating, but it felt like a glove for that hour. I'm fucking addicted to this track. I can't talk about it till the fucking sun rises. So we're gonna move on to track 11, which is Lucky Charm. Another dope song. This is just building on their um, like their trademark synth guitar sound, and um, uh, like the pianos they add over it adds a nice layer to the track. And then like around 145. 
the riff that comes in at that point is really fucking cool. It sounds like something from uh, like a video game or something. And then um, the pianos that come in after that are just really psychotic. This is a really good song right here, Lucky Charm. And then next up is one of the first Helium songs I fell in love with, which is number 12, Elephant. I uh, perfectly placed at track 12. Bro, I fucking love this track. I'm gonna say that a lot because this is some of Helium's best material on this album. But again, a very catchy song. This thing has a hard time leaving my head. The lyrics here are like mind numbingly simple, but it's all about the way the words sound in the context of this track. The vocal melody follows the guitar riff, and it sounds insane. And it's also like this um really like dirty screaming sounding fucking riff that's going on in the background too. And then towards like the end of the song, you get to hear it by itself, and it's so fucking cool. Just uh, another one of the songs where Timmy is just showing how well she has a sense of melody in. And one of my favorite songs on the album. So we're gonna go up to, what is it? Track 13 now, which is I Am A Witch. This is the final track on the Super Bowl Plus EP. A little bit of a darker territory and it's also like more um, stripped down. And uh, this is like almost a Mary Timoney solo track. There's no drums and I think maybe even no bass. Self-explanatory title, Timmy's talking about like an evil witch about how methodically she's gonna f fuck with your life or kill you. Like, I love this line right here. I'll make myself into a knife so that the closer I get, the more I'll take your life. That's hard. And then the riff that comes in at like 145. I just love how dark and dissonant it sounds. That drop D sound, I love. And then it comes back again at like 148. Yeah, just this song is just really bleak and murky. Too many killed it on this one. I, could, uh, I just wish I could listen to that riff some more. But we're gonna move on to track fourteen now, which is the Ghost Car demo. Ghost Car was the B side to their uh, like classic single Patch Trick, which is um didn't make it to the Dirt of Luck, but uh, it's um way different from the, this version. The final version of Ghost Car was just Timony and her. Uh, piano with some drums added. This feels like more like a full band song right here. And uh, it's got that signature synth guitar sound Timmy is famous for to me. And then there's like this riff I took around. Where is it? It's like at 114. It's like, or it's actually 117. It's like, God, I fucking love that. Again, like her synth guitar sound just sounds like something from like an 80s video game, which is why I fucking love it. I've never heard a guitar sound like that in my whole fucking life. And she also has a cool line in here where she says, If you can't keep your soul while you're alive, there's no way you'll have it after you die. I love when Timmy writes darker shit, and that's what th I'm all about. This track is great. I love it a lot more than the uh, final version. And, uh, kind of, it kind of, I think it kind of would have fit on the Dirt of Luck, if, if, um, to me personally. But, oh god, this next track. This is another one track that I just go to the most. Puffin' Stars. This shit is like fucking drugs. This is from the Rockstar Kills compilation of 1994. I've never heard a song in my life that sounds like this. The guitar and the piano and the verses almost sound like each other, like, sometimes I'll think the piano sounds like a guitar, cause it just sounds really weird, but it's dirty as fuck. I love how the, um, the, the verse is just Timmy singing, and she has like this really disembodied effect to her voice, and it's the way the like, guitar and the piano sound. It has this really good build up to the chorus, and uh, the chorus itself, the notes she puts out in that chorus, unbelievable. And this, um, for the bit, and she just puts it down for the Bird of Paradise on this track. Which is not a real artist, and I bring that up because on Rockstar's Kill, it's labeled as Helium featuring Bird of Paradise, but that was just a joke to fuck with people. But, um, this has like a really strong nighttime feel to it, which is perfect because the song revolves around stars. I, I, when I listen to this, I never just play it once. I play it like almost five times at once. This puppet star shit is out of here. God, if this... 
I fucking love it. It's a really amazing song. Again, one of my favorite fucking songs of all time in Puppet Stars. Classic shit. And this, I'm looking at the credits. This one was produced by Ash Bowie. This is fucking pretty fucking cool. But we're gonna move on to um, uh, track 16 now, which is. It's a Leon Space Song demo. Just a rough version, rough draft of the song that became a uh, classic on the Magic City. <clears throat> this is just Mary, her guitar, and like a beat machine, and a four track cassette recorder. She might have played drums on this, but it's kind of hard to tell because the sound quality you can tell is recorded off of a cassette. This is a day and night from the album version. It just doesn't feel right listening to this without the strings. Still cool to hear because the transformation it had from this demo is crazy. But uh, that's all I have to say about that track. Next up is the track 17, the dragon number one. This is another track we'll get to like at the end. Or two songs that crept up or uh, jumped up on me. I didn't really think about these tracks. I used to just listen up to the Puffin Stars and then restart. But um, this was recorded for the Kill Way compilation. And this song is like really dusty and it sounds a little bit distorted. But it still has a great track tone to it. This song is just another exhibit of Mary Timmy's unparalleled creative uh, sense of melody and like guitar sound. I love the beat. Switch out like 126. Where is it? Like, a, like a, again, just that 80s video game sound that Mary Timoney puts in with the guitar. Amazing. And I think, um, I wish this track got reworked for the Magic City. It would have um, fit right in with that album. But, uh, great song right here, Red Dragon number one. And then we go to, uh, track 18, Fantastic Castle. Um, this might be surprising, but... We actually now have a Helium song that I don't like. This thing just doesn't keep my attention for long. It's just Timmy singing over like this really murky, rugged bass line. The track moves pretty slow, well, pretty slow with that. It's not a track for me, but uh, A for effort, I guess. But then we go up to the um, sign off track on the album, 19, uh, track 19, the Golden Bridge demo. This is like one of the last songs Helium recorded and released in like 1999. And this song is fucking dope. Like it was the other track that um that I kind of slept on, but um, grew to like. And one thing, um, the steel drum melody is so fucking catchy. It goes like a. I I never liked steel drums to begin with, but not until this song. Just the way, like, way she made it sound. It kind of sounds like a guitar as well. But um, yeah, this has more of like that dirty eight bit sound that the Dragon Number One had and like Ghost Car had. And it drives me insane. This drives me insane. Helium has a few more songs recorded around this time, and they basically become lost media. Like, I think they're going to make a third album, like, around this time of, um, like, 98, 1999. And some of those car songs are called Pirate Girl, Guns and Cars, You Got a Soul, Bird Heart, Bird Song, and Julia. And I want to give a, sh- um, I want to give a quick, uh, piece to, uh, LadyOfTheFire.org, the Mary Timoney fan website. That's how I found out about these songs. They have a lyrics tab. where It's a section called Unreleased Helium Songs. And um, they have lyrics for almost all the songs. And the song Julia in specific sounds really fucking dark lyrically. And I want to hear that shit. So I think it would have gone to like a darker direction if they made a third record. Which I would have been completely about. But um, I found someone who does have those songs like cassette. I tried reaching out to him. I haven't gotten a response yet. Hope I can get one. But, um, that is Helium's Ends With N from 2017. My favorite album of that year. One of my favorite albums of all time. All genres considered. It's my second favorite Helium album behind Only The Dirt Of Luck. I think this album, like, summarizes the band the best. You hear, like, a bunch of different sounds that, like, they're experimented with over the years. You hear all Mary Timmy's different vocal deliveries. All the different talents that each member of the band has. It's all on ends with end. And, um... If someone said this was the best Helium album, I would not even put up a fight. My favorite is The Dirt of Luck, and it's always gonna be that. But, uh... This is my go-to Helium album. Just... Mary, T- Mary Timmy is in my top five singers of all time. And Helium is almost in my top five bands of all time. And this album is one of those main reasons why. Because just hearing all the different things it can do as a band right here... 
was it just blew my fucking mind. And uh, yeah, I would say I give this album a perfect five out of five. Only one song in here I don't like, and I'm not counting the Pirate Proof tracks. So perfect score for this. And uh, my top three favorite songs, I go three to one when I do this. Number three to one, Puff and Stars. What institution are you from? And Lucy. So that was my ends with end review. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this shit. I want to spread the gospel about Helium. This band is so fucking slept on. I feel like they should be heard by like millions around the world. So I'm, until next time, I'm Resident 47, and I'm out of here.